Hey there YouTube, I'm here today with a little unboxing video. I wanted to, I haven't done an unboxing video before, but people seem to like it, so I thought I'd do one of those um, along with a little bit of a product review. This is a new product that Windsor and Newton was kind enough to send me a sample of. Um, their new line of markers called Windsor Newton Pigment Markers. Uh, and they saw that I did a lot of marker work and so they were kind enough to go ahead and send me a sample package and um, give me a, give me a go at them and see what I could do. Um, so here we go. These might go out of frame for a minute, but uh, there we go. It's actually a big package, too. I was expecting it to be a little, you know, one of those little sample sampler deals where, you know, there's maybe four or five colors. It looks like might be a few more, which is kind of cool. So let's go ahead and open it up. most annoying thing to me is the freaking bubble wrap. It's necessary, I know, but it's a pain in the butt. So I'll probably cut that, this part out, just because my knife is pretty dull and uh, it's old. And you don't want to watch me struggling through an hour worth of bubble wrap. Actually, no, I'm doing okay. Unfortunately, my hands are working better than the knife, so. There we go, finally got the bubble wrap off. And sent me a nice little note. Hope you enjoyed the exclusive preview, Windsor Newton. Pretty cool. And here we go. There's the box, nice. It's got a little embossing on the front. I don't know if it's embossed, it's just shiny. <laughs> Whatever you call that. It's pretty cool. Alright, let's take a look. And what is this? Okay, so there's some marker paper, A5. Um, if you guys don't know, Windsor Newton, um, I mean, you should, if you do art, you should. But uh, they do, basically, they've been doing art supplies forever. Um, I used to work at Aaron Brothers when I was younger, and uh, yeah, they I got to know their products very well, and I've been using them ever since. I use them. I use their watercolors, and um, I've used their oil paints before. Um, I pretty much used all their products. Uh, I do have some of their watercolor markers. I'm going to do a, a, a video of those too, just a kind of a review, let you know what I think about them. But this is uh, first as far as the these straight markers so looks like we got 12 okay and some postcards I don't know I don't really know what these are I guess samples of what people are doing with them I'm not sure interesting They look like they might take a little practice um, if they're really, they bleed a lot like that. So what I'll do is I'll cut the video short and I'll um, lower the camera so you can kind of, you can kind of take a look at what they actually look like and things like that. So, and I'll give you some product specs as well. Only one moment. Okay, we're back. Um, here's the close up view of the markers. Um, let me give you a little product information that they gave me. Um, these markers are dual tipped with a fine point and a fl flexible brush nib. Perfect for multiple line thickness and superior detailing. Da -da -da -da. Light fast, so no fading or color change in color for up to 100 years in normal gallery conditions. There's 107 colors. Uh, 
Uh, they have a extensive gray scale, 24 different grays, four different tonal grays. Hmm. And they have a white blender, which I thought was interesting. I don't know if this comes with a white blender. No, it does not. Hmm. Okay. So, I guess we'll be doing the blending on our own. Anyway, um, yeah, that's pretty much the most of it. Not too much information, so let's take a look. They gave me, um, I showed you the marker paper. Oops, that's the camera they sent me. Um, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to go ahead and use regular super crappy sketchbook paper. Um, the stuff that I use all the time and see how it does. This is a scratch piece of paper. Do it on the back there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at one of the markers. If I can get them out. So no black. That's interesting. There is petrol blue, so no grays. All right. So here's what we have. Plastic, as expected. This is emerald. And they're round, uh, kind of rounded. If you look at the top, they're triangular. Uh, do they roll? They absolutely do. So they're not gonna, they're not gonna stay in place if you, uh, if you lay them down on a slightly slanted surface. So that's something to keep in mind. So let's take a look at the tips. There's the chisel, oops, standard chisel tip. Nothing special, you've all seen it before. Let's take a look at the brush tip. And this is not a brush tip. There we go, focus. This is a standard nib. So, I don't know what they were, maybe this is a prototype? <laughs> I'm not sure, but it said it had a brush tip, a flexible brush tip, and these do not. Focus. There's that one. And as you can see, that is not a brush tip. That's a standard pointed nib. Okay. So maybe the next, if I can get this damn thing out of the package, maybe the next release of the markers will have the uh, the brush tip. I'm not sure. But there is no brush tips here. Wow, that one's real juicy. It's real wet. Okay. Put those back. Is there anything underneath? Let's see. Oh, there's more markers here. Well, I'll be darned. This one looked like something bled through on there. So it's not just 12. And there is... Is this white? This is a colorless blender. So I don't know if it's really white. On the product sheet, it said that the white could actually write on dark paper. So I don't know if it's Jesus, I'm really in there. I don't know if it's really white ink or if it's just a standard colorless blender like. Uh... Yeah, this is just a standard colorless blender. There's no uh, white pigment to it or anything. It's not opaque, so it's just it's just like. Um... Oh, that's not the. What is this? What color is this? Oh, this is the colorless blender. There's also a white. So there's a colorless blender and a white. Um, it, it's also called a blender. Weird. Okay. So this one is white. And it is yeah, as you can see, it's it's like white paint. Is this a brush tip? No brush tips still. All right, so no brush tips, but more colors than I expected. Which is cool, can't complain, right? 
All right. Well, let's. Is there anything else underneath? No. That's it. All right. So that's good. So what I'm going to do now is now that I've kind of shown you what they look like, um, and uh, supposedly there's going to be brush tips. I don't know if I hear an update from the representative, then you know I'll ask them if if they're coming out with the brush brush tips or what. Um, and if not, then I'll go ahead and update the video. But yeah, I'll come right back and I'll do like a little. Actually, you know what? Let's just do a quick writing sample on cheap paper. See what it looks like. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing really. This one was the really wet one. I don't know why I grabbed that one. So let's go ahead and let's do, let's take, no, I don't want to dirty up the yellow yet. That was a petrol blue, apparently. And let's go ahead and, another thing I noticed. So the round tip on the top, it's got a round tip and that's the chisel. And the square tip, or the triangle tip, sorry, that's got the small point. So they're not labeled though on the outside like um, like Copics, but or you know there's a, there's other markers that show you which tip is which. But um, this one's not. You just got to get used to the the look of the the side, and only one side is marked with the color. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at. Throw some green in there and see how well it blends. Huh? It's kind of tearing up the paper of uh, this cheap paper. All right, so basically zero. It looks like it. It might. The blue might be getting a little lighter but it doesn't look like there's any blending going on uh, after it's dry. But that green is still a little wet. It's hot over here, so I don't know how wet it is, but. Yeah, it's really hard on the paper. You can see the yellow is lightning, lighting up, lightening up the, uh, green a bit. We got a lot of, well, actually the bleed through is not as bad as I thought. The yellow's a lot worse than the green. Okay, so if you take the green and rub it on that blue, getting a little bit of blending. It's turning green, but um, it's kind of expected, I guess. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know why it's kind of maybe the maybe it's because the chisel tips are still kind of new. They're kind of chewing up the uh, chewing up the paper a little bit. Let's take this brighter blue. Oh wow, that's really saturated too. I don't like to be too negative about any product that I try until I've used it for a little while. Um, just because, you know, I tend to get in my comfort zones and, um, you know, I like what I've been using and all that stuff. But um, this one seems a little, a little dry. Um, but you never know. I mean, there could be some, some cool things that these can do that, that others can't. Um, one thing I noticed is that the, the colors that I am laying down are very, very bright, very saturated. You might not be able to tell on your end, but, um, over here it's, it's pretty noticeable how bright they are. Then again, it's just 
the colors, you know, the colors that, that I picked were are very bright colors. See how the yellow bled through. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, the yellow bled through a lot, but the orange, hardly at all. Maybe because that marker was dry. The blue, for as wet as it was, it, that didn't bleed through hardly at all either. So that's kind of weird. Well, this is cool gray, number five. Let's go, let's go to a cool gray, cool gray one. The numbering's odd. They gave me a cool gray five, cool gray four, and then straight to a cool gray one, which is kind of weird. Okay. That's very light. They don't appear to be refillable. Um, at least the product sheet doesn't specify anything about them being refillable. So um, I don't really know if that's going to be an option later. Um, I mean, because you can't really tell that Copics are refillable until you see the actual refills. So who knows? Um, on the back, they give the uh, pigment information and the light fastness and things like that. So that's good. But it seems like, I don't know. I wonder what the white blender is. What exactly is it? Is it just like an acrylic, or is it a, like a gouache formula? It looks like a, the white's picking up some of the color on there. So you're able to lighten up things, but you're gonna get your marker tip kind of kind of muddy and you'll have to clean it off. It's similar to it's kind of unique, so it's kind of like it's kind of like just I mean, I guess you could have the same effect by using gouache or using a you know, a gel pan or something except this is lighter. It's more subtle. And the paper seems to be, wherever I've laid the marker down, I don't know if you can see this, it's, it's kind of bubbly, you know? This is super cheap paper too, so that's part of the problem. But I can do, I can, I draw, I draw sketches on this with my Copics all the time and I don't get a lot of bubbling, but this is still wet, so it may flatten out as time goes on. This is a super crappy drawing I'm just testing out. This is what I do with a lot of new stuff that I get, I test it out. Um, also gave us a portrait pink color. Let's see. That is an interesting pink. <laughs> I'll have to use the white on that. <laughs> Let's check out the colorless blender. If I can get it out of here. See what, uh, see what this looks like. Eh, no different. It's the same thing with, with Copics and, and Prismacolors. They all have colorless blenders in there. Uh, Prismacolor markers. They all give you colorless blenders and basically they don't do crap. Um, you can achieve certain effects or you can kind of wipe stuff out a little bit, but I never, I honestly have never used them unless I'm trying to clean up a spot that yeah, I just didn't like or whatever, but you can get the same effect with just using rubbing alcohol. So, so yeah, um, that's my initial review. I'm going to go ahead and I'll do a little bit more in-depth. I'll play with them a little bit and see if there's a improvement on different paper and whatnot, and I'll get back to you. Bye. Hey there YouTube, I'm back. All right, so what I had been doing previously was um, doing a review of um, the Winsor Newton pigment marker. Um, it's something, oh, my phone's ringing. 
something um, that I was provided, uh, given a free sample um, to test out, and I'm doing an honest review on it because, you know, I'm not just because somebody gives me something doesn't mean it's going to be something I can use in my everyday work, um, considering I illustrate for a living. So, um, previously, I'm sure I'm going to connect these videos, so um, this may be part of the same video. But um, on this type of paper, um, this is just cheap, like the cheapest, one of the cheapest Canson um, sketch pads that you can get. Uh, what is it? A 50 pound. So that's pretty, pretty thin. But that's a sketch paper that I use regularly. I use it with Copic markers and my inks and things like that. Um, just because it's affordable, it's quick, especially for sketches that you don't really care too much about. Um, it's I use it all the time. Now, what I've noticed is that almost no blending happen, happens with these markers. You can see a little bit of um, smudging right here. Um, you, you can see that it's lighter and that's because I use the white, um, they have a white pigment marker, which is actually, it's, it reminds me of using like a watered down gouache, which is interesting for a marker. Um, that's something that's new that I haven't seen. It, even if I don't use the regular markers, I may actually just keep this in my arsenal just because it's interesting. Um, sometimes you want to lighten up an area, but you don't want to go too light with it. That, that might be useful. Um, so there's that. But as far as the other colors, I noticed they're very saturated. They're very vivid, but it there's a lot of ink that comes out um, and they sink. It sinks right into the paper immediately. Uh, and as far as blending, you can just see a little bit of smearing, but basically my yellow marker ended up turning green um, so I mean if you want a pure yellow if you want to go on with yellow after and you actually want yellow and not green in it you're gonna have some problems with that um, if you're trying to blend so so far on this particular type of paper um, not so good now they did provide me with a sample marker paper um, and so I figured hey let's give it a let's give it a shot on there um, and see how it reacts if it's the same. This is, I don't use marker paper. It's very, very thin. Nothing against marker paper. It's just, I don't know. I just don't use it. Um, it's more expensive. It's just as thin as this. It does behave differently um, when using markers on it. But I've noticed that, I don't know, certain markers don't blend in the same way. And it could be that I'm just not used to it. So I went ahead and started the test here, uh, just playing around. And I thought, well, maybe I should record this. So Let's look at, um, and just with this basic test, I did notice some blending, but I also noticed that it just kind of smeared right off. So um, that's not a, really a good thing um, when it comes to blending. You want to, there needs to be some manner of permanence in the paper uh, or in the marker or in the color that you lay down first. So that way, I don't know, there's a gradation going on. Um, so what I did was I just laid down, this is a, they, they gave me a pretty decent set. It's about 24. They're supposed to have brush tips. They do not. I'm assuming the ones when they, once they release them, they'll probably have the brush tips on there, but this is fine. I don't, I'm just testing. Um, and it came with about three different cool grays. Um, I have a C, a five, a C4 and a C1. So I just laid down the C4. You can see it's just like regular mar uh, marker paper. It's puddling a little bit. Um, a lot of ink comes out. As far as I know, these are not refillable. Actually, there's a... Now, I don't know if I'm supposed to pull this apart. <laughs> Probably not, but let's go ahead and... Nope. You may be able to buy refills. You never know. Um, kind of interesting. So that popped open fairly easy. Um, and I bet you anything, let's see, I bet you you could tweak these. I bet you, I bet you anything if, uh, if you, if I really wanted the brush tip, I might be able to take a Copic one, um, and try to jam that in there. This looks like it might be a little bigger, um, but oops. Oh, look at that. I put the cap right back on and it split. I don't know if you guys can see this. It split the top of the marker very easily. That's because if you look inside, there's a ridge in there. 
that if you don't get it exactly right, and apparently I did not, because this thing is thrashed. Look at that. So, that is interesting. So this marker is pretty much wasted because I put the cap on. <laughs> okay, there it went, it went back on. But I'm not gonna be able to color with this. I'm not gonna be able to use this again. Um, so yeah, let's hope that, I guess with these, you can, you can put another tip in there. Yeah, and this is too small for anything really. Um, this is the regular standard pointed tip. So, bad news on the tip. Let's see what, what, what kind of a, and this is the lightest one too, which is probably the only, one of the only ones I would use. But if you look on marker paper, put this back here, just in case it bleeds, it's a great, a lot of puddling. The, the pigment is not a even distribution. Um, might be a quality that you like. For doing clean, smooth gradations, that's going to be difficult. Now going over the darker color, you are able to smear it a little bit. You're actually able to get rid of quite a bit of it. Right here you can see that's where the original C4 or C6, whatever it is, C5, was laid down and I pretty much wiped the entire thing away. But the problem is, is it's not like a smooth, even gradation. It's it's just it just wipes it away and leaves kind of a little bit of a mark. So, um, man, I hate marker paper. Anyway, so there's that. It, it is they are interesting. Let me take a look at some colors actually. Let's see because the grays. Another thing I gotta mention is seriously, this is just a plastic case, but getting these things out is a pain in the ass. Like literally, I've broken it. I don't know if you can see, I've broken this just taking these things in and out. So, I don't know. Another thing to note is I noticed that this marker had some leakage going on. So it could be, it's been really hot around here. I'm, I'm in California and we're in a drought and it's been super hot. It's not as hot as Arizona or anything like that, but it's it's been hotter than normal. So um, that could have caused that. It could have just happened in transit. You never know. Um, but that's just another thing. But hey, but at least we know we can rip these things open and we might be able to tweak them. Um, make a Franken marker of some sort. So let's go ahead and Let's do some red and yellow and see what we come up with. Now I will do a sample drawing. I probably won't use this paper. This paper is awful. I might test one other type of paper just to see if it takes anything better. Just something heavier than the Canson, the cheap Canson. Uh, maybe use the Strathmore 400 or something. Um, those, when I use Copics, that paper tends to handle the Copics best, so maybe it'll work the same way with these. Um, but as far as blending, I don't know. We'll see. So, notice how bright that yellow is. Even in this, not the greatest lighting conditions, it goes on almost with a thickness. But it's still transparent. So that's, there's some unique qualities to these markers. It's just, are they practical? Is it something that, as a professional illustrator or even a doodler, are, are you going to enjoy is something you're going to be able to use on a practical level. So I noticed the streakiness. It's, it's weird. It's it's cool looking. It's just I mean, and it and it only happens on this type of paper on on the, this stuff. It just soaks right in. It almost seems like there's not enough, as as heavy of a flow as you get on this paper, it almost seems like there's not enough, you can see some streaking happening, to keep up with this paper. And this is a very, very thin paper, so, I don't know. I, honestly, I don't know if it's going to be able to handle the Strathmore brand, because that is a thicker paper and it takes a little bit more juice to, to soak in. 
So anyway, all right, so I almost no blending when you lay the yellow down first. Let's do the yellow after. There's some nice streaking going on here. But then look at the tip of the marker. It's orange, so you're not gonna really, let's see what you got going on here. But this yellow, there's something about this yellow that I guess, I don't know if you can pick it up on the, on the video. It's so saturated, it, it almost has a creaminess to it. It's, it's pretty weird. But even after rubbing and going down, and it's still orange. You're still, see at the edge, you're still gonna get some orange spots. So I don't know how, do you really wanna blend these guys? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's better just for flat, but that's kind of cool. That's a little bit, a little bit of some shading. And then if we do it on here, nothing. A little bit, not really though. Just stains up the marker. So, mar marker paper, you can get some interesting shading effects. Regular paper, not so much. All right, so again, almost has a painterly quality to it. Um, as far as the blending goes, it's not, maybe these would be good for a particular type of background, um, if that's what you're going for. Seems like I'm only having good results with the yellow, but as soon as you are finished with it, if you don't, Clean that tip off thoroughly, you're never going to get that yellow back again. So, what I'll do is I'll test one more paper. And honestly, I don't think the results will be good, but might as well. In one second. All right, here's Strathmore. This is what I like. I like to use these with the Copics because it does soak up a little bit more um, water, or I'm sorry, water, I mean ink, but the blending is actually pretty nice. Um, it takes color pencil and everything very well. It's a color pencil sketch. I think I ripped everything else out and I sold those. So let's... Um, Test the markers real quick on there, and then I'll show you that white pigment again, uh, the white pigment marker. We'll see how it, I'm curious to see how it holds up on a on a toned paper like this. All right, so the yellow. Now on this paper, um, the 50 pound. This is Strathmore 400, and I think that's. 80 pound, I want to say. Let's see. Uh, 80 pound, yeah. So it's, this is tone gray 80 pound paper. It seems to be holding up fairly well, um, just with the yellow. Let's look at the gray. Pretty dark, a little streaky, which means you're not going to get 
I mean, you can imagine if you go really fast, see how you're not going to be able to lay down tones on this paper at all. Um, flat, at least a flat tone, especially if it's not refillable. Um, might be able to use, I don't know, we'll see. Um, it, so uh, that's no good on this paper, but um, let's check out the white. That's what I'm curious about. This is the white pigment marker. I used it a little bit, but didn't use it on toned paper. You can barely see it. It's light. It's 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 getting stuff light, and I you know I bet you if you just layer on top of it, it's gonna get brighter and brighter. Well, that's kind of cool. So I could see myself using this. It's almost like you know I mean you can use a color pencil with this stuff, which is probably cheaper than these markers. Um, so that'd probably be my first choice, but it. Uh, Kind of cool if you want to just just lightly lighten up areas. Again, you can probably do that with a color pencil, but I'm just trying to find uses for these things uh, that you know something different and unique that that I can accomplish with them. Uh, because I don't like to bash products, especially if I'm not used to using them. It could just be a, a user error. This is interesting. So if you lay down the white. It seals off, so it really doesn't let the the color soak in at all. This is my the one that I busted the tip on. It's interesting. I wonder if it does that with Copics. Let's try. It sure does. So hey, look, we just found another use for this white pigment. There could be applications for that. Um. What else? Let's see what red looks like. Again, no blending on this type of paper whatsoever. Well, I am kind of digging that white. I don't know. I don't know what I'll use it for, but it's interesting. So the only the only way that you can really blend at all on this with these markers is using this marker paper. Um, but you can note you notice that I don't know if you can, but there's already some bubbling and bowing going on on the areas that I did lay down a lot of ink. Um, it's kind of bubbled up. Nothing that you can't flatten out. It's not that bad, but. This paper's thin, and I hate marker paper as it is. Just for those qualities, it just leaves these streaky lines all in there. And the only thing I honestly use marker paper for is so, to put behind my pages and my sketchbooks. I bought a pad for that, so that way it, it's thin and it doesn't bleed through. But that's, I mean, I, I kind of like this thing, but. I don't know. Am I going to really use that for my drawings? All right, so I'm back. Um, yeah, I, I just I don't know. I'm torn at what I could use these for. I can definitely use the white and the black probably, but um, everything else. I mean, you know what I didn't try? They make a colorless blender. Let's see how the colorless blender works this type of paper because so I tried it on the others and it didn't do I tried it on regular paper it didn't do anything so oh, that's cool so the color blend the colorless blender and this may be something just because I don't I, you know I've never used I don't use marker paper just because it's so thin and clients don't really prefer it I guess if you don't give them the option then no big deal but you yeah if you use the colorless blender in conjunction you can probably get some nice gradation going
works on the red. Getting it even and flat is gonna be a huge challenge though. It's still gonna have a painterly quality. And if that's what you're going for, then that's cool. But a lot of times I need some of my stuff to be flat. Now maybe if, look at how messed up the tip looks now. Better clean that off because probably never be able to use this colorless blender again after this one tutorial or review. to make do. I guess, I don't know. Okay, so there's the colorless blender. And that actually worked pretty good on the marker paper. Um, so I'm going to do a quick sketch just to see what I can do as far as a practical application. See right through it. It's okay. And I don't know. I'll do like a little chibi type character or something. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and speed that up. So.
All right, guys. So, um, you, I just played the, the video of me sketching this, and as you can see, on the marker paper, they actually performed pretty well. I think I was having uh, trouble at the beginning because I was attempting to use, I was inking first, which is a big mistake because nothing dries on this. Uh, it takes forever. So, um, some light pencils and then do all your coloring and the inking after would probably work the best. I'm sure that's a common thing with marker paper. I'm unaware of that because I don't use marker paper. But um, the blendability with this, um, it's different. I just, I think I was apprehensive at first. Um, it, it doesn't, once, now that I know what I'm doing, I'm pretty sure I can go through and do a drawing faster. Um, and the more times, you know, obviously, uh, I'll get used to it and I can find shortcuts and things like that. But once I understood how to blend it, um, the marker paper, uh, it, it was, it was getting a bit rough, but maybe I was overworking it, um, just cause I'm not used to it. Um, but it seems like once you understand how to blend it, I was using the colorless blender, I was using white, I was using my finger. Um, it, the, the colors kind of stay on the paper, they stay rich, and so you can get nice smooth gradations, but not through traditional means. If you're used to using Copics, it's not gonna work like that. Um, you've gotta kind of play, play with it a bit. So if you're patient and um, you wanna, play with these and learn how to blend them, I think you can probably get pretty fast. I, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm still gonna continue using them. I, I actually, after using this, there's qualities that I can, and things that I can do with these markers that I can't do with the Copic markers. Um, that being said, I haven't really used Copic markers on marker paper um, I've once before, but not this brand. Maybe it's the Winsor Newton brand of marker paper. I don't know. Um, I will go ahead and try to do a Copic marker drawing on, on this and see how it compares, but um, the the blending is really nice. The colors, they blend into each other and they stay very, almost rich. Um, so you're not, you don't get a, I mean, I guess it does get muddy. You can see some of the flesh tones um, where I was kind of overworking it a bit, not sure how I was going to blend it. Um, but yeah, um, I think once I started to get the hang of it right around the hair and all that stuff, then it became a little bit easier. Um, and then the background was, was pretty simple. So I think, yeah, I think they're actually pretty cool. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and continue to experiment with them and see what I can do. But um, I hope you enjoyed the review. If uh, you want me to review any other products or anything like that, or you have any questions on them, just let me know. I'll be happy to answer them and uh, take it easy. All right, so I forgot. I wanted to add on something. Um, I did do a quick test with the Copic markers just to see as far as if I could lay down some color, blend it with my finger, and see how that worked, how long it stayed wet. Now, it looks like the Copic did not blend very well in that manner. It dry The alcohol-based pigment in the Copics dries very fast. Um, and it's also stickier than the other, um, than the Windsor Newton. So, you, basically, um, I'm going to have to say that for marker paper, I would have to rate the Windsor Newton brand um, is a lot more fun to use once you get the hang of it. Um, I think the Copic does blend, but it... it it kind of wipes away. I, I don't. I don't know. It. Um, it had similar qualities, but as far as the blending was, believe it or not, a little bit harder uh, with the Copics. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'm just. I'm sure once I play with them for a while, I could figure out a way to do it. Um, but yeah. So I tested that out real quick. Um, so the the basically what how I feel is as far as the the cons. Um, you saw that one where I where I put the cap on. It's a very thin, very narrow area, and if you're not careful, you will. Um, they don't stay on the desk. 
they roll um, because there's no um, like you know stopper. It's a it's a little difficult to tell which end you're grabbing, but I guess that's it's the same with with any other marker. Um, this actually has at least shapes on the end, so you can kind of see. Um, pros. It is the the pigment is a lot more rich. It's thicker. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, to add to the cons, doesn't really blend well on regular paper. Um, and it doesn't really blend well on regular paper. And as far as the refillable factor, I do not know if you're going to be able to refill it. But no, this one doesn't want to come open. Another one I pulled open. But um, yeah, I, I have no word on that yet. But um, as far as I know, it's not refillable. So maybe they'll start selling little cartridges that go in there. Seems like it would be easy enough. Um, yeah, and the pros, like I was saying, it's the the pigment is a lot more rich. Um, this is light fast, so it's archival quality, and um, each one has a different, you know, it has the pigment numbers and it has the light fastness um, and all that stuff on the on the back. So it's it's they're made to last for a long time. Um, they may be more expensive. I'm not sure. Copics are actually pretty expensive, so probably might not be. Um, let's see. What else? I think that's it. Um, again, I, it, the, the white blender is kind of, is pretty cool. Um, so that's a, that's a plus. That's something I haven't seen before. Um, I have a feeling that I would run, see how smooth and rich blending with that white blender is? It's quite a bit different than, um, than anything I've experienced with a marker. It's kind of like using thinned out paint. Um, yeah, um, I guess that's pretty much it. Um, they're, they're pretty unique. You should check them out. Um, Definitely get some more, uh, some marker paper if you do, and uh, hope you have fun with them. All right, take it easy.